<clears throat> Let's open with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love you give to us, for your presence with us. Uh, you came among us. Uh, you were with the, the Israelites in all sorts of ways. You walked with Abraham. Uh, you were uh, you walked with your people in, in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ. You're with us in your word and in the uh, bread and wine of the Lord's Supper. You're with us through our baptism. And, and we pray that you be with us now as we study your word, as you have promised. And um, let that presence guide us, strengthen our faith, um, give us the assurance of your love and your forgiveness, and, and grant us your peace always. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Genesis 18. Someone like to read? <clears throat> you go first, I'll go second. Okay. And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mam Mamre as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men stood in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree while I fetch a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk, and the calf, which he had prepared, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you in the spring, and Sarah your wife shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the matter of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child, now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you in the spring, and shall, Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, No, but you did laugh. When the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom, and Abraham walked down with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abram what I am about to do? Abram will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and what is just so that the Lord will bring about for Abram what he has promised him. Excuse me. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin is so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I, I will know. The men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abram, Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous and with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous? No. Will you not spare the, spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous people in it? Far as it, it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous and the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you, will not the judge of all the earth do right? Then the Lord said, If I find fifty righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke, Abraham spoke again, Now that I have been 
so bold as to speak to you, Lord, though I am not am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than fifty? Will you destroy the whole city because of five people? If I find forty-five there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again he spoke to him, What if only forty are found? And he said, For the sake of forty I will not do it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only thirty can be found? I will not do it if I find thirty there. Abraham said, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to you, Lord, what if only twenty can be found? And he said, For the sake of twenty I will not destroy it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only ten can be found? Then the Lord answered, For the sake of ten I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking, and Abraham had left, and Abraham returned home. Right. <clears throat> so, who were these three men? <coughs> we find out two of them. Angels? Yeah, all two right. Two, and then I was sort of getting mixed up there because it said, you know, the three men. But then he was speaking directly to the Lord, uh -huh. you know, so then you have to, okay, well then up the three, one of them was. Right, right. In 19.1, um, which we'll talk about next time, but it says, oh, the, the two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, All right? So two of them are angels, and one is God, All right? Okay. So you see, this This is another one of those, um, there's, a, there's a technical term for this, it's called a theophany. Uh, it's where God re means God revealed, all right? It's where God reveals himself. We see that, um, we saw that in the Garden of Eden, um, where, where God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Um, we, we see places where God reveals himself, like as a, a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire and, and different things like that, where God makes himself visible. And in this case, he actually makes himself visible as a human being, all right? This is not the same as the Word made, became flesh and dwelt among us, all right? He appeared in the form of a human being, the way that angels appear in human form. That doesn't mean that he actually took on human flesh, all right? Now, he was able to eat, so, you know, these, um, he, he, he does a really good job of pulling off, you know, looking like a person. Um, but, but he's, um, and, 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 you know, may have actually, uh, you know, the sort of this question of, <clears throat> so if you, if you cut him, would he have bled, you know, or something like that. And, and this is speculation, but presumably yes. All right. That, that when he took on human form here, um, you know, that he was, he took on a, a completely human form. Um, but... It must have been something different. He wouldn't have recognized him as God. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He recognizes this is God, all right? Um, this time he doesn't show up as a fire pot. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, he knew there was three men, but he knew that that guy in the middle was God. Right, yeah. Even though he looked like a person. Yeah. And so, you know, presumably God somehow revealed this to him, or, you know, uh, for that matter, given the number of times that he had talked with God, he may have heard his voice, you know, here's these guys come walking up, and he hears this sort of conversation of some people coming walking, and it, wait a minute, I know that voice, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I think he was becoming a little more familiar with him, with God. You know, not familiar and not reverent, but yeah, in his. Anyway. You know, and 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 we see that there's a difference here between when when God talks to Abraham. Abraham doesn't go, oh, "It's God," you know. It's like, "Oh, it's my friend," mm -hmm. you know. Um, not like, "Hey, buddy," you know, but it's it's my friend. It's the Lord. It's it, you know, it's God. And there's a there's a sense of reverence, um, most definitely, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But um, but this is this is this person that I have a, a deep loving relationship with. Now here's the stupid thing, though. 
if he recognized him as God, and if he recognized the other two as angels, why did he think they had to eat? Hospitality. Okay. All right. Yeah. The reason, this is all sort of Middle Eastern, ancient Middle Eastern hospitality. Okay. That um, that this is a way of, of, I mean, it would be insulting to not do this. Okay. Um, so it was, it was a show of respect, uh, hospitality, and, and just because um, that's what you do. And this happens... This happens a lot whenever I read things in the in the Bible, and, and sometimes it's confusing because it's such things like he told her to go knead some bread and bake some dough and bake some bread. Then he goes and gets a calf, and then they sit down and eat. It it's always seems weird to me that there's got to be a time frame of some sort that we don't know about. Well, yeah, yeah, we read about yeah. it in a couple of verses, and you go. You know, this would take a few it's like hours. A day or a day. Day. <laughs> At least I would think several hours. I, would, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. that, that, you got to kill it and then clean it and then cook it. Mm -hmm. This right. isn't the first time that I pondered that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, they didn't have fast paced lives like we right. did. It, it wasn't like. Kind of like down in the south, you know, they move slow down there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, like, you know. They didn't, you know, if you brought them a microwave oven back then and they actually had a way to use it, they'd go, why do I need that? Well, you can cook your food so much faster. That's part well, of then can we, can we <laughs> assume then that what it says, and I don't really want to say that, but, but what it said actually happened, or is this a symbolic thing? No. Or did I, they actually kill the, the yeah. sheep and I wait so. until yeah, yeah. it was, okay. Yeah, this all, this all happened, but it was just, a, um, you know, it, we we don't get the and then you know four hours later sort of thing. It, mm -hmm. um, back then, you know, if you think about a, an Israelite reading this, and they read this, and and they've got the time frame in their head, but they don't bat an eye about that. That's normal. Plus the fact that there weren't books or TV or telephone or radio, so they would talk about any travels or. Any experiences or things they knew, or that's how they got information and learned things, was by talking with people who came and went. They yeah. couldn't email them because they didn't have no. computers. <laughs> that's right. Or cell phones, they couldn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, how so, did they survive? I'm sure I don't know. Because <laughs> you know me, I can't survive without my email and my Facebook. <laughs> Had to have humor. <laughs> so, um, we would, yeah, they, we don't get the rest of their conversation. You know, I mean, it's, it's not like, like, oh, we have guests. Stay right there. I'll be back in six hours. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, <clears throat> like, See, hey. I think he ran in and told Sarah, get, get those that little hors d'oeuvre thing ready so they can sit and eat on that while we cook the calf. <laughs> well, and he had servants, you know. Yes. I find it interesting that he had Sarah cook the bread and and not servants. So that I think that probably tells you something about Middle Eastern culture too, or, you know, ancient Middle Eastern culture. Or maybe her servants did cook it. Maybe that, he just told her. Told her, hey, see to it that this gets done, and then she told her herself. Yeah, that could be too. But it's interesting that, that in one sense we say that it's symbolic, in the other sense we say that it really did happen. You know, that's an interesting part well, to me. What's symbolic? The fact that he actually offered God something to eat. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it, it really happened, and God could actually eat it. And it wasn't really symbolic. It was just, um, did God need to eat? No. But at the same time, he was expressing, you know... If you think about if if Jesus showed up at your door, you know, you sort of like, what do I do here? Pizza uh, Hut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deliver a couple of pizzas. Well, like, that's I don't like, know if we would know who it was. Maybe that's like when he met the disciples on the road to Emmaus and they cooked fish and ate it. Jesus didn't need to eat that fish. Oh, when, this is after his. When yeah, when when that was, that was after that when when he revealed himself okay. to oh, them okay. in the upper room, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, 
Yeah, yeah. And in fact, there he, it was to show them that he was flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. And they gave him some fish and some honeycomb, mm -hmm. and, and he ate that. So, um, yeah, the, you know, the other thing here is that uh, table fellowship is a really huge thing um, in, in Israelite culture. Um, and uh, that you, you know, Jesus got in trouble for eating with the tax collectors and the sinners. Um, and he goes, so he, he sat at the same table with them. Well, no, this is a huge deal because you, you only sit at, when you sit down at a table with someone, you eat with them, you are sending a, a very strong message about saying, you know, we're like family or we're, you know, good friends or, or something like that. You didn't just sit down and eat with anybody. It wasn't like you go into the diner and sit down next to a total stranger at the bar and, you know, and, and eat. You, I mean, you only ate with, you only shared a table with somebody that you had a, a close relationship with. And, uh, and by, by sharing a table with that person, you're saying this is a, this, you're sort of giving them your, your stamp of approval in a sense. And, uh, so when Jesus did that with, with tax collectors and sinners, people, oh, hold on a minute here. <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, for Abraham to say, I want to share a table with you, um, that's a, that's an expression of relationship and, and intimacy. Um, <clears throat> all right. So this, this is something that just struck me, um, a few months ago, according to modern kosher food laws, Beef and dairy cannot be eaten in the same meal. All right, and it's because of a passage that um, that I didn't look up, but it's in Leviticus, I believe, possibly Exodus, about um, uh, you should not eat a calf boiled in its own mother's milk. No meat and milk together. Yeah. So, um, which was apparently the practice of of some pagan culture as part of their worship ceremonies. And um, so he said, don't do that because that's that's a pagan worship practice and you don't want to do that and look like them. All right. So, so modern um, Orthodox Jews have have taken that sort of the next step and, and said, oh, well, you can avoid eating the, the uh, uh, any sort of cow, you know, like you never know if you slap a slice of cheese on that burger, um, <laughs> that milk might have come from that cow's mother. And you want to avoid that, and so... Wow. Um, so you just... No cheeseburgers. Yeah, you never... In fact, um, when when the North Ridge Hill Band goes to, to band camp, they go to uh, Camp Wise, which is a Jewish camp. Oh. And they, they get some they, weird they, food there. Yeah, they, they rent it out, and so... Um, and But since the camp provides the meals it's all kosher food yeah and so they can't it's it's anytime beef is served there's no dairy served with that meal yeah you you can't I didn't drink know milk that, there's juice I know or there's something like that some strange stuff. things mm -hmm. well, the kids don't care there okay so so if you're not supposed to eat dairy and beef together here we have in uh, verses seven and eight it says, I'll find it again. Um, then he ran to the herd, selected a choice tender calf, gave it to the servant who hurried, hurried to prepare it, and brought some curds and milk. And the calf they had prepared and set it before him. So here, he's he's not just eating this stuff, he's giving it to God. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think the law had been given. All right. There's your first point. The law hadn't been given. Okay. Super. I just you. fell right into that. So, <laughs> yeah, well, you so, did a good job there. Yeah. I had no idea. All right, the, that all those sort of food laws had not been given. They were not given until Mount Sinai. All right, which is hundreds Super. of years later. Uh, about a thousand years later. Um, I might be off. But pretty close to that, actually. Um, so, <clears throat> so, 
So then, um, it, but but also, um, you, you'll notice a lot of sort of modern, or even in Jesus' day, a lot of the rules that um, that are practiced are sort of overreactions. You know, it's, it's sort of like, and we even see this in the New Testament where um, where it says Jesus Christ is Lord. Right? What were they saying there? That, that he's the you know sort of the king. Well, yeah, but they're saying more than that. When when you see in the New Testament Jesus Christ is Lord, what it's really saying is Jesus Christ is Yahweh, Jehovah, that he is the God of the Old Testament. And the reason that it says that in any time um, that he's re he's referred to very often as the Lord um, in when the um, Ten Commandments were given, to the Jews, and, and they said, oh, should not misuse God's name. Okay, well, if we don't say God's name, we can't misuse it. <laughs> and so anytime we're reading our Bibles and we come across Yahweh, we'll just say, the Lord, Adonai. Okay. Oh. And, um, and and so they, uh, they said, well, then we can't break that commandment. All right? So it's, you know, it's sort of like when the devil comes to Eve and says, did God say you're not supposed to eat it? Oh, he said we're not even supposed to touch it. <laughs> well, no, that's not what he said. But if you don't touch it, then you won't eat it, you know. And, and it's, it's that same sort of mentality. And, and so um, <laughs> I guess you know where it came from. But uh, so, you know, what, what we find here is, is the same sort of thing that, um, that well, you're not, you got to make sure that you don't uh, eat uh beef and, and dairy together of you know this particular beef with this particular dairy well if we just cut out beef and dairy in the same meal all together we're good and uh and, and so that practice had has continued to this day um but we see here that it's it's not that god hates cheeseburgers okay <laughs> wow thank you <laughs> It's not a sin. I actually put McDonald's right out of business, no, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's there's plenty of things that uh, the companies do nowadays that God doesn't particularly like, and they still do just fine. All right. Um, so why did Sarah laugh? She was all worn out. <laughs> <laughs> She couldn't understand why she she was laughing because she was gonna she they were, she was supposed to have a son. All right. God responded, "I'll be back when you have your son." Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> she gets it, and then she is her, she laughs and goes, <gasps> and it could have been joy too. I don't know. She might have looked at Abraham and said. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can we still do it? <laughs> <laughs> Days before Viagra. Um, <laughs> so, but you know, and and we could we could sort of guess why she laughed, but then it actually sucks. Seriously, I'm gonna have a kid when I'm this old. Mm -hmm. You know, she's in the middle of a hot flash and you know <laughs> excuse me I, I, I think she was decades past the hot flash today. I hope so but I have not much hope <laughs> I would have thought the I the 80s of I police I would have thought I, I've heard yes I've asked women in their 80s just so I know if there's ever <laughs> any hope or end and they said oh yeah they still have them and so then I <laughs> See, Broke so, down and cried. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying, you know. Here's here she's, you know, experiencing all of this kind of stuff, presumably, and and uh, and then, oh, so I'm gonna have a kid. Yeah. Um. Could we discuss biology for a moment? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but the thing is, this is once again. This is God saying, all right, we're going to do this, all right? But we're going to do it when it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Because so no if, doubt. Yeah. We know no who doubt. did it. Yep. Yeah, we know this is a God thing. And and there's no question about that. All right. So, um, 
So yeah, God God responds, no, you lie. <coughs> I know he did. You can't lie to me. Um, but we'll see. He, he, he doesn't say, well, since you didn't believe, then you won't have it, you know, or, or something like that. You know, he doesn't punish her. He just says, all right, well, when I come back, I'll bring some crow for you to eat. <laughs> all right. Um, but, you know, the, the other thing about this, God's giving him a time frame. Yeah. Finally, the poor yeah. people. Yeah. Golly. Not very much either. I mean, that's three months actually, right? Because you know, he said a year, so so they better get busy. Which yeah. which could mean <laughs> the thing is that could mean she was already <laughs> pregnant. He was just saying you will have a child when I come back yeah. in a year. And um, so so yeah, all of a sudden, just to have that time frame when they've been waiting for so long, that all of a sudden, like oh. Finally, you know, and it, it reminded me of um, last week. We got a, a yeah, phone call. Hundred and ten when he goes to college. <laughs> 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 we were. Um, I got a phone call Catch from uh, from Lorain County Children's <laughs> Services, um, and and they said, uh, well, <laughs> the the uh, fingerprint sets that we sent in in July, we just got those back. Well, we sent ours in in August, so that means that maybe next month. Hopefully, within the next month or so, we should finally be licensed foster parents. And um, and and so, and, oh well, that's sort of a time frame, you know. At least we know that that we're sort of in the queue, you know. <laughs> it, I'm <laughs> glad that when you get put on hold and they say, you know, your caller number eight or whatever. Yeah, it's only 15 minutes we'll yeah. be together. Yeah, like in six months, you know. <laughs> but uh, it feels Amazing. like that sometimes. <clears throat> but yeah, so I, I kind of, in a, in a much, much smaller um, sort of sense, um, you know, we, we got a, a little bit of a taste of this sort of idea that, well, in a year, you know. Because, well, of course, with us, once we're licensed, who knows how long it'll be before we have. Well, they'll be beating action. your door down. Well, <laughs> I know that they're, I know they're anxious to um, to get us licensed. So. Do you have any clue as to why is it they have to go through that many different people, or are there too many? Can there be that big of a backlog? Uh, that many government, people? government, government. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> My understanding is that um, that they're understaffed. Okay. And. Um, and, you know, I guess the last thing we need is to create more government jobs because <laughs> the government can't afford who they have. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we opened a nursery school, that was under the direction of the welfare department at that time. But we had a, oh, good gosh, we had a terrible time. Yeah. Because we had a nursery school. It wasn't ours. But we figured we could just replace it. Mm. Eh, eh, it didn't work yeah. that way. Yeah, that works for bars. But yeah. not preschool, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, is Sarah's laughter different from <laughs> Abram's? Remember back in, um, in 17, before he was called Abraham, um, in 17, verses 17 to 22, um, God had said... Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of ninety? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Same kind of laughter. That's what it sounds like. To me. It sounds like. It kind of does, doesn't it? Yeah, their mm -hmm. age, age is in. I think both of them thought that their age were way out of, way out of space. I have a kid. The only thing I could see would be possibly because Abraham had more experiences with God personally. His laugh may have been more likely to have been actual joy that it finally was going to happen because he believed so strongly that it would. And maybe his was truly more that's, joyous that's than point. unbelieving. Mm -hmm. Good point. Well, yeah, but he may have been thinking he's got God's permission to at least practice. <laughs> <laughs> so you think he didn't practice before? <laughs> I expect he did. 
<laughs> wow, it's like being with my eighth grade confirmation class. Here. <laughs> That's what happens when they get old here, Pastor. Like, oh, uh, they Actually, revert. They're, they're much more discreet because they're embarrassed about all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Shoot, we don't care. We're beyond caring. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um... So, yeah, I don't know. I could just picture them going to bed like God told me I should. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's no, terrible. Good night, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> all right. In uh, 18 verses 16 and following, God convenes an important meeting in Abraham's tent. All right. What do you draw from this? When they got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom. Abraham walked along with them. Well, it's, it's not quite in his tent, but um, he said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? God's, you know, God thinking out loud. Or um, either, either thinking out loud or talking to the angels, saying, Hmm. I always had a question. Uh, uh, it's part of my question is, why did he have to hear about it? Why didn't he just know about it? what was going on in Sodom? And oh, like why did they go down to check? Yeah, well, he seems like he's he's not doing anything about it. Only reason he's doing anything about it is because people were complaining and talking about it to him. Okay. Why are they? Why would they have to complain and talk about it to him? He should already know. Yeah. I'm no. Sure, he did. All right, yeah, good question. And and what, um, here, how does he say it? Um, mm -hmm. It says, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin is so grievous, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. All right, so yeah, that's kind of what you're saying. But you think of this sort of, the sense of outcry that, that, like, you don't have to go there to know how bad it is. It's sort of like I could smell it from here, mm -hmm. um, and, and it's so bad. And um, <clears throat> and so you know, here you get the idea that God doesn't just listen to rumors. You know, He checks into things, and and, and God's not encouraging us to to oh well, if you hear a rumor, then it must be true. You know, okay. obviously He's God; He knows. You know, and and we can even tell that um, later on when, when He starts bargaining with Abraham. Um, God, excuse me, God knows, uh, you know, how many. Are there. Yeah, that's interesting. They actually would bark and yeah. let them know. Right. He's got to be teaching them something. Okay. But, but here's, here's God. He's, you know, he's talking about this and, you know, he'll become a great nation. All nations on earth will be blessed through him. Another reference to Jesus. Um, I have chosen him. He'll direct his children, his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what's right and just. The Lord will bring about for Abraham what he's promised to him. All right. So, you know, he's, he's saying all this stuff. And, um, and, and he's saying it in Abraham's presence. Right? This is a tremendous honor for Abraham to witness this. This is like heavenly C-SPAN right here. Okay? <laughs> God's convening his council and Abraham gets to watch. And not only gets to watch but gets to interject his thoughts. Yes. So, you know, all of a sudden he's he's going, well, hey, uh, you mind if I just jump in here? I understand I'm not a voting member, but I'm sort of an advisory member of this council, so, you know, <laughs> can I can I say something here? And, and God actually lets him. All right. Do you think that's some way of elevating Abraham in God's eyes by doing it? I don't know what he would elevate him to, but what I mean is it's an awful respectful thing to do. You're shaking your head, Anne Marie. What are you thinking? Oh. No, I, I think it's <laughs> God giving Abraham more, again, I don't want to say more faith, but more letting his bringing his faith up supporting him, encouraging him, helping him, his faith be stronger, mm. more confident in God. Because I, in reading this, as we go through it, it's it's pretty obvious that 
every time Abraham doubts, but each time his doubts grow less, and he every time he sees God fulfill the promise that he gives Abraham, he gets a little stronger in his faith and more able to trust God. So that's what I, I think it is. It's, it's God helping Abraham to have a stronger faith, to grow and mature. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is all about that it's relationship really thing again. Yeah. Like you know, here we see this 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 loving relationship, all right? I tell my wife things that I tell nobody else. All right? Why? Because we have a deep intimate personal relationship. All right? Here's God telling Abraham Abraham things that he is not telling to any other human being. Now, he told Moses about it. All right, so we can find out after the fact. Um, but here, he this is God's thinking about what he's going to do, and, he, and he's you know he's it's it's weighing heavy on his heart, and and he shares it with Abraham. He's not looking for advice, but he's going, you know, should I tell him? You know, <laughs> is this something that, that he can handle? And you know, and and stuff, and 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 God's already got this stuff figured out, but. But here we see we see God's heart and, and, and we see God's concern, his you know, his his love for the people. Even though he's so just absolutely sickened by the sin that's going on there. We see his love that, that oh this is this is so tremendously bad and, and, and I've gotta do this and, oh. Would he have also told Abraham because Abraham would have been concerned about Lot. Right. Well, that mean, that leads us to the next question. Oh, Why does God tell I'm sorry, him about No, good transition. All right. Why does God tell Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah. Um, your your nephew he lives there, and you should probably know about this. All right. And but at the same time, look at how does what what reaction is God wanting from Abraham? He he wants him to um, intercede on behalf of the good people. Yeah. Right. No, you think okay? What? All right. God says I'm going to do this. I'm going to destroy the city. All right. Now. A righteous, holy, pious person should say, "Well, you're God, so whatever you say, right?" But you think about when you somebody that you love is hurting. Do you say, "Well, you're God. If you're gonna smite them, then go for it. You're God, right?" No, we pray for healing. But he might also be trying to show Abraham that though he's has the power, he's still a just God and he can still forgive. It might mm -hmm. be it might be a way for him to demonstrate to Abraham that how he what he can do. Yeah. yeah. That he's not gonna just kill everybody, that he does have compassion and and uh, understanding and Yeah. I don't know. You know, this story is a perfect example of why God gives us the Bible in stories and not just as a textbook. <laughs> Here we get insight into the heart of God. We get insight into how God operates. That that He loves us enough that that even though He is just and He hates sin and cannot abide sin, that when it comes down to it, number one, He wants us to pray for sinners. He wants us to go to him on the behalf of others. And because he wants us to love them. And when you go to God on someone else's behalf, that is an act of love. Right? And God loves them and he wants us to, to experience, he wants us to share that same love. Right? And so that... Abraham grows in faith and knowledge of God and, 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 and he experiences the love of God. Abraham experiences the same turmoil 
that God is experiencing, although on a much smaller scale. Abraham is concerned about Lot and his family. God's concerned about every single soul in those cities. And and, and God is, is, you know, here's the... Sometimes the um, <clears throat> you talk about uh, God's sense of justice and, and, and love. It's sometimes referred to as the, um, like, I'm trying to remember the exact term, but it's like the alien part of God or something like that, that, that really God is all about love, but he's also just. Yeah, I've heard that somewhere just recently. Right. That God does not like punishing, but he can't stand sin. But he doesn't want to punish it. And so he's always looking for a way out. That's why he sent Jesus. <laughs> strange. Strange. Isn't that the word that was used? Instead of alien, it's the... It's the... It's, it's, he does a strange thing. I think that's what okay. I... Okay. That's not the term that I've, you know, heard. Okay. But I think that's... different people may use different terminology for it, too. But yeah, it's this sort of foreign, like, this... This God's justice is, it's, um, you know, and it's it's something that um, that I mentioned this morning in Bible class. It's the difference between where where God says, um, "I I visit the iniquity of the fathers to the third and fourth generation," right? And you go, "Wow, that's really extreme to punish the third and fourth generation for something that you know that your grandpa did," right? But then you have to look at that and people and, and you know and people see that and they go well that's horrible right look at the rest of it and then he says but to those who love me i bless to the thousandth generation and so the whole point of that is is not that boy if your grandpa sinned man you're gonna get zapped <laughs> right the point is that God really, really hates sin beyond what we can even fathom. So much so that that it, it, it still bothers him generations later. But he loves us so much and, and blesses us a thousand generations later. And, and so it's just, you see the, just the tremendous, tremendous love of God. And that it is, um, as, as extreme as his law and, and his sense of justice is, his, um, his, <clears throat> his love for us is a thousand times, um, greater than his justice and his law. And it's so easy to lose sight of that, and, and people focus on the, on God's, um, you know, punishing sin, and, and they think, boy, I can, I can never go to to church because that's for people that are better than me. That's for good people, and I'm not a good person. Mm -hmm. And and how could God ever forgive me? <clears throat> so, when bargaining with God, why did Abraham stop at ten? He was counting up Lot and his relatives. He was what? Counting up Lot and his relatives. <laughs> Don't you think you know, he was he was yeah, sort of okay. telling Lot, things up? his wife, his mm -hmm. sons, daughters, spouses. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. gotta be at least ten there. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's totally him up. <laughs> yeah. There's ten. Alright, so if all of them are faithful and I think they are, <laughs> then they'll be alright. Alright? So does Abraham influence God's plans? No, I don't think so. No. Mm -hmm. God still saves them. He still saves Lot and his wife and, and his daughters. Not, you know, they, they still didn't, not all of them, apparently. <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> and when you look at Lot and his daughters, they're not the most righteous people either. Um, so, so even in that case, like, okay, yeah, Abraham, have you talked a lot lately? <laughs> right, but he saves him anyway. And um, so, so no, he doesn't influence God's plans. Right, but there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of, 
sort of questions about <laughs> when we pray to God, do we do we change God's mind? Do we influence him? Right? Um you know, we see in, in Luther's explanation to the um second uh, petition of the Lord's Prayer, um, <clears throat> thy will be done, right? The good and gracious will of God is indeed done without our prayers. But we pray in this petition that may be done among us also, right? God's will is done without us praying. He blesses the um, the good and the evil. He brings rain on the um, on the, the poor and the rich and the, the, the good and the bad alike, right? And the ugly. Huh? And the ugly. <laughs> Sure. They're good, bad, and ugly. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> I was paying attention to you. You said good and the bad, and I said. The... <laughs> um. <laughs> so, um. But you know, so when you when you go to God and, and pray, you know, I, God's gonna bless us no matter what. Okay. And and if God is is determined one way or the other. It's, and you know what it comes down to it. I, I I heard about somebody that they said because they they believe that that God would listen to their prayers, but they knew that God's will is always good. They said, "Why do I want to get God to do what I want when God knows best?" <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, this person was afraid to pray because they might tell God to do the wrong thing, and it's like just leave it alone because God knows best. Don't tell him what to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, God wants us to talk to him because when we talk to God, what we're doing is, is to use sort of a modern term, we're synchronizing our will with his. I'm finding that the older I get, I start to say the more often God tells me to pray something, but it's probably the more often I hear him telling me to pray for something. Well, it's, you pay attention to it. Yeah, I, I guess I'm paying more attention. I think right. so. It, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. You know, and, and that's the thing is, is what do you pray for? You know, you you pray for for God's will to be done, and you know, so so how do you pray? God, tell me what to pray for. Yeah, that's why one of the the best prayers is to grab the Book of Psalms and pray the Psalms because that's God's word that you're praying back to Him. Um. And, and, and in fact, I would encourage you to use the Psalms as your prayer book. Take it and, and pray a Psalm each day, and, and just work through the Psalms that day. Um, I think that's what Harriet does. Yeah. So, she yeah. did. I think she still does. That's you know that's that's a great way to use the Psalm. Um, and uh, I think as the older we get, the less likely we are to pray for something for ourselves. I can't remember the last time I prayed for something for myself. Oh, I pray for myself. Do you really? <laughs> yes, indeed. I sure do. I don't remember what I do. It's definitely okay to pray for yourself. You know, don't maybe, ever maybe think it's not. I don't know. I just don't remember. I know that that for me, I always I always have a hard time. Um, you know, I use for the prayer of the church. I use a one that Synod puts out, and I, I do some like editing if need be or whatever, but. It's just kind of handy because they cover a, a nice broad range and then make sure that I'm not forgetting somebody or something. Um, you'll hear about it if you do. Well, right. You know, but, <laughs> this week, you forgot to mention. <laughs> yeah. So there, Politicians or something. Right, right. Oh, you know, okay. or, or boy, it's been ages since you prayed for this or that. You know, they kind of do, they do a nice job of... of Kind of making sure over a period of time to cover all, all the bases. yeah, <laughs> and uh, although I still like I saw on Sunday afternoon on on Twitter I saw uh, was it last week week before right after the Arizona shootings um, that that they said oh why didn't we have prayers for those families and 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 I thought about it and I hadn't I'd been busy with other things that weekend and I hadn't seen the news so I hadn't heard about it until. Sunday afternoon, and and well, someone could have said so, and yeah. When you said, "Are there any prayer requests?" Right, and somebody could have. They yeah. could have said. And well, and this wasn't you know from somebody here that oh, it was sort of me. it was somebody out you know 
in the universe somewhere. <laughs> that was probably from Mars. <laughs> One of the Martians. If, if they have internet there. <laughs> but uh, you know, it was. But it was, you know, it was that sort of thing that there's always stuff to to pray for, and you know, like, well, how often do we pray for the persecuted? Is it often enough? Because they're being persecuted all the time, and you know, and and stuff like that, and and. Um, and, and you can't possibly pray for everybody, but I was anytime there's like a prayer for, um, pray for our pastor or something like that. That I was like, I don't like praying that prayer because I feel like I'm going, hey, everybody pray for me, you know, and <laughs> and I feel selfish, you know. No, but no, but it's you always know better. Yeah. <laughs> well, because we have that has to be done. Right, well, yeah, and <laughs> you know, and especially since it's always worded. Like you know that that God would keep the pastor faithful and and to his calling and and things like that. It's to like, protect and, you. And like okay, good, yeah, you it know, is. pray pray that that God keep. You know, it's like I you know I, I well yeah. Satan um, would love to have you. Yeah. So we have to protect you. So yeah, and and that's good, and <laughs> you know, and I've also found talking about does our prayer influence God. I have found that there are times, there have been times in my life where after the fact, looking back on it, it seemed like God was, was sitting there with his blessing and just waiting for me to ask for it. And as soon as I did, he went, okay, here you go. <laughs> you know, and would he have if I had not prayed for it? <clears throat> yeah, probably, you know. Um, but it was like he was waiting for me to recognize that this was coming from him. Because then when it did come, I recognized instantly where this was coming from. Whereas otherwise I might have taken it for granted. And it strengthened your faith, just yes. like Abraham was. And, and it strengthened my faith. I mean, there's things that that happened to me in college that to this day were... I where I was broken without food and, and prayed to God and, and he just started dumping stuff on me. Um, and that where for years, things that, that happened like right after that prayer, blessings were still flowing in for, for years afterward. And it was just like, wow, <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, you know, and, and so it was a, it was a real education you know, for me, that, that, yeah, the, there's times where, where God waits. And it's just like where, um, when, when somebody is, is, um, in the, in the Bible, you have, uh, Peter and John go and, and the guy asks them for, um, for money and, and they say, you know, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. And I, it's funny because I know the song, but I, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you are it's a children's song version of this um, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk we went walking and leaving and praising God um, and so you know did it, here they they called on God's name and, and healed this guy right had this guy been praying for years for healing um, I don't know he was asking for money they said well we don't have any money, but here, have this instead. Boom, you're healed, you know. And, um, and, and there's other situations where, uh, like, you have the blind man who was blind from birth, and, um, and they say, Jesus, who sinned? And, and he said, No, this isn't because somebody sinned. This is so God can be glorified. You know? And, and so when we pray for things and God answers that prayer in a very noticeable way, God is glorified through it. And so sometimes he holds off so that we recognize his hand and, and, and so he will be glorified. Does that mean that if we forget to pray, he's not going to bless us? No, because look at all the atheists that he bless, you know, but, but God works that way sometimes. And, um, you know, we see that throughout the Bible situations where when people call on God, God answers their prayer and he could have done it before that. But he waited until they did. I have, I have that happen different times where I want something, you know, pray for something, but 
I'm only a scotch, you know, and I just wait and nothing happens, okay? But then I go and then I can okay, so then I'll pray to God for it to happen. And it does. There you go. And yep. It really does. Right. And then when I pray, like, most of the time I pray, you know, for somebody else, but I mean, once in a while I say, this time, God, <laughs> pray for me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, help me. And the, yeah, get and, through my. And know. there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing oh, wrong with praying for yourself. And um, you know, and the sort of um, the old saying is you you um, you pray for others first, and then you pray for yourself. But but you pray for yourself. You know, and saying God, I need you too. I you know, and, and frankly, if if you don't pray for yourself ever, well, that could be idolatrous. Oh, I'm good. I can take care of myself. I, I don't, you know, these other people, boy, they really need you. But I, I'm, <laughs> I can take care of myself. Um, so have you ever tried to strike a bargain with God? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I did, uh, I probably have done it numbers of times. I remember when I was trying to quit smoking, I made a bargain with him. And I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I do. I do when I use it, break it. I probably said that a number of times in my life. I would think so. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I'm sure I have. I just mm -hmm. feel that I have. But I can't remember specifically. You know, if this I happens, I'll such and such a thing. Yeah, the, the worst bargain I ever heard that someone start, tried to strike with God is someone that, that didn't really believe in, in, in his, his Christian friends that just try, just try God, you know, and, and ask for something and, and see what he said. And, uh, and so the guy says, okay, and, and then he comes back a week later or so, and, and he says, well, I prayed and I didn't get it. He says, well, <laughs> well what did you ask him? And he says, whatever, I, you know, I, I prayed for this and... Um, and and I, I said, God, if you give, just give me this one thing, I'll never ask for anything else as long as I live. <laughs> oh, and the guy said, well, of course he didn't answer that. He wants you to ask for things. <laughs> saying, you know, it's like saying, you know, if you do this, I will never speak to you again. <laughs> <laughs> and God knows that no matter what you say, you're not going to do it anyhow. Well, yeah. There's that. Just right. I so, yeah, and, and you notice here, that that when Abraham is is bargaining with God, he doesn't say, "God, if you spare Sodom, I will." No, I never got that as bargaining. I got it as his questioning God, and his concern for Lot. That without directly asking God, "Will you save Lot?" He's trying to find out if if that can be if that can happen. <laughs> if, I, I guess I, I never did look at it as bargaining. Okay. Well, it's just, you know, it's interesting how he sort of starts high and, and kind of yeah. goes lower. You know? <clears throat> and, and that, you know, that's something else. Where he's saying, God, these, these big cities, would you, would you save the city for the sake of ten people? And God says, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, that gives us some insight into the heart of God right there. You wonder why he didn't just go to that thing. Why did he start at 50? Why? I don't know. Well, you know, he... Is he at, feeling at, him see, at first, you know, he's he's sort of appealing to God's glory. All right? You know, he's saying, uh, you know, far be it for you to do such a righteous thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Mm -hmm. um, you know, boy, what will people say if you do that? You know, and that and that's sort of what uh, um, when when uh, Moses is is talking with God on the mountain, and um, and and God is just absolutely fed up with Israel, and he's going, "I'm Moses. I'm going to strike them all down. I'm going to start over with you. The covenant um, will be fulfilled through you and your descendants instead." And and Moses goes, "Hold on a minute, God. What would people say?" Here you saved Israel, and then you struck him down. What's that going to look like? What are people going to say? No, does, does you know? Did God go? 
Oh, yeah, you're right. I never thought of that. Yeah, I never thought of it. No, no, this is, God is, you know, is getting Moses to intercede for the people. Here, God is doing this to get Abraham to intercede for the people. All right? And, and yeah, if, if this was a fairly righteous city, but there's just a handful of wicked people in it, then, um, then, yeah, that would, that'd be kind of weird. And what would people say? And, um, but, uh, <clears throat> so he starts high and he works his way low. Did we think he stopped because of Lot? Is that correct? Is that the idea? He stopped yeah, I think, because... Yeah, I think that he, he kind of totaled him up and said, all right, we should be good now. Okay. And I better not push my luck. <laughs> <laughs> Because okay. because God and I have a pretty good relationship, but He's still God. Okay. And and I and I think I I think I did my math right. All right. Um. So all right. I think we already talked about this next question. What can we learn about prayer? Um. But all right. Now we've talked about types. All right. Typology. Ab how does Abraham act as a type of Christ? A sort of uh, foreshadowing. You know, there's what is Abraham doing here that's like what Jesus does for us or did for us? Interceding for us? Yeah. Right. Jesus goes to the Father and says, "Are you gonna Are you gonna wipe them out?" Yeah. And, and in his case, Jesus says, "Will you spare them for the sake of one righteous man?" For the sake of, of your one son, just one, will you save all of humanity? And God says, for the sake of one, I will. And so, so yeah, Abraham is, he's, he's close, but, you know, not to the extent of, um, <clears throat> of, of what Jesus does. All right, and so the last question is, is one that you can all sort of answer for yourselves is, is there anyone in your life that God wants you to intercede for? And I can tell you the answer is yes, all right? <laughs> <laughs> just in you case. just have to figure out how many. Right, right. yeah. And where to start. <laughs> right. But, you know, there may be people, and this is, this I'll make a sort of closing thought, is who are the people in your life that you're not interceding for it should be. that you should be excuse me mm -hmm. all right you're right and and you know before i mentioned the the arizona um uh shootings who's been praying for the killer yeah that was brought out you know uh, radio uh, prayers and things yeah because yeah. yeah we you know pray for and, the family and his family and, yeah. His parents, I think, are obviously distraught. Yeah, and and I mean, any relative of him that, especially if they have the same last name, mm -hmm. because then people go, "Oh, hey, that's the same last name. Are you?" Yeah, yeah, he's my cousin, you know, and oh, it's not me. This isn't a value that we promote in our family, you know. Yeah. But, um, you know, but, I mean, clearly, this guy needs our prayers. This is, guy is, is horribly, horribly troubled. And, um, you know, and, and so often, you know, when we, when we hear about these, these great tragedies where somebody goes on a killing spree or something like that, you know, and, and yes, we should pray for the families of the victims and, and for those who are, um, you know, hospitalized and, and things like that, all right? But we should also pray for the killer. You know, pray for your enemies. And, um, you know, there was a church a while back that got in trouble because on their sign out front, um, and it wasn't, it was in sort of late 2001, they, on their sign out front, they, they oh, yeah, put... Sure. Um, Pray for Osama bin Laden, and people got offended by that. Oh. Let me tell you, I, I pray for those terrorists every day that God would reveal His truth to them and and and, um, and give them saving faith. Mm -hmm. 
And um, but that that kind of runs contrary, to, you know, because at the same time we have this sense of wanting justice and saying God smite them. You know, you want revenge right away. Yeah. I often think about him sitting behind the bars in jail, and the real person he wanted to kill is apparently going to recover. And that was the person he was the closest to and, and aimed specifically at. And I just often wonder, or not often, I just wonder how pissed off he is. Mm -hmm. You know, that you're that demented. It didn't work and you're here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's oh, close it. Sad. <coughs> Heavenly Father, there are so many people that are, are troubled and in need, people that, that don't know you and, and the amazing love and, and, and forgiveness and peace that you give. And, and so we pray that you be with them, that you show your love to them, that, that they may know the great peace and, and comfort and joy and hope and assurance that we have, uh, that you have given to us. Enable us uh, to not only to recognize the needs of those around us um, but to take those needs to you and when you turn around and, and, and answer our prayer by saying go and help them we also pray that, that you give us willing hearts uh, to respond in, in faith and in love for our neighbor we pray in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Thank you. Now, I sometimes find that when I sit down to pray that I have a hard time getting through my prayers because I've got a list of people that I want to pray for in front of me and and I'll and I'll be praying for somebody and 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 God will say you should give them a call <laughs> yeah you know you should, you should fire off an email to that person and and you know and so Okay, but I gotta get through this prayer first. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, like, no, really? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so then to do that, then, okay, all right. Now I gotta get through this list, all right? <laughs> <laughs>